It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn our exceptional food. I take winning very seriously. It would just be a dream come true. This is one tough competition. I can win this. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. In this one-hour episode, these six contestants will all compete for the last remaining quarter-final place. The winner will then be up against three other exceptional heat winners. Our quarter-finalist is Cassandra. Oh, my God. <laughs> Chris. Graham. Congratulations. Well done, mate. Yes, thank you. But first, it's the quick elimination test. Today, I want somebody to walk in here and cook a great dish. I don't want fingers crossed cooking. I want them to prove to me that they understand what a complete flavoursome dish is all about. You've got this one opportunity to start what could be a fantastic journey. One plate of food, 50 minutes to cook it in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of today's ingredients, which include smoked trout, minced pork, wonton pastry, potato, apple, spinach, chives, and chili. Simon has given up his job as a forensic scientist to open his own restaurant. My long-term goal is to really have a place that serves food with love, and that's what I'm all about, really, is, is food with love. Excited to be on MasterChef? I'm ecstatic, absolutely. Why? Uh, because I'm mad, totally. No, basically, I'm in love with food, and it's only now that I've realised I have to make this part of my life, career, everything. I've got to find out if I'm a chef. Jeremy dreams of owning a deli, but first he'll have to overcome his nerves. Jeremy, today you are looking the most nervous in the room. Why? I don't know. You would think with my job that I wouldn't ever get nervous. Tell us about your day job, Jeremy. I'm a police officer on the London Underground. Jeremy, the things you must see on a day-to-day -day basis, <laughs> you cannot let cooking get to you like this, mate. <laughs> Hopefully, if I take a deep breath, I should be able to cope with the pressure. 20 minutes. You've had 20 minutes. I'm a rustic cook. I think it's kind of family orientated. It doesn't have to look so pretty, but it tastes good. Publisher Morag's ambition is to serve her rustic style of food to paying customers. Morag, tell us why you're here. I have a house in France, and so the idea is that we convert a large pass into a bed and breakfast where you do evening cooking as well. And you celebrate the food of France or the food of Britain? I think a mixture of both. Maybe franglais, as they now call it. You've got 25 minutes left. You're halfway. Scientist Susie's love of food goes right back to her childhood. I remember my sister and I taking out pocket money and going to a restaurant um, when we were very small. I'd say I'm obsessed, really. <laughs> Why are you here on MasterChef? I love cooking. I love food. I love cooking. And I'm very good at eating. Do you think that you could win this competition? I hope my palate's good enough to be able to taste whether something's good, so I'm, I'm going to rely on, on that. What makes me unique is that I'm so open to new ideas and I'm still so excited about food. If I won MasterChef, it would mean a new beginning. Alice? Hi. How long have you been cooking? Not long, but I've only been cooking real serious food for about a year. Do you have a big enough repertoire? Most of the recipes I try I've never done before and they usually turn up fine. So I'm hoping everything I touch can turn to gold.
firefighter Robin dreams of having his own restaurant by the sea in Wales. When you deliver that plate of food and people do say, wow, it was a great sense of achievement. What do you do for a living now? I'm a firefighter. Good. And you want to stop saving our lives and cook for us instead? I, I do enjoy saving lives, <laughs> but also I love cooking as well. You've also got something in the oven. Right, in the oven we have a smoked trout horseradish and spinach souffle. You have gone the bold approach, the souffle in the first level. Got to go all or nothing, really. Hopefully it'll work. Ooh. Guys, you've got five minutes left. Five minutes. Time's up. That's your lot. Passionate cook Simon wants to prove his talent with an Irish potato pancake filled with smoked trout in a cream sauce. The smoked trout is a delicious flavour. It goes into the hint of cream fresh. Your potato pancake's got lovely, lovely texture around it. The potato pancake, I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think you've shown great imagination. Will police officer Jeremy's nerves have affected his dish of smoked trout fish cake with an oriental salad? I don't particularly like the dish. It's not the best looking fish cake and neither is it the most inventive salad. I think you had issues with your fish cake, your potato wasn't dry enough, it's a bit... Oh, what a shame. Where's, where's my... Big flavours. Rustic cook Morag has made pork and sage patties with caramelised apples on carrot and potato mash. I like the lemon in the sauce. I'm picking up the sage in the patty. I, I can see that you do a bit of cooking. I like the idea of the pork and the sage stuffing, apple sauce. I think you just need to pull a couple of ingredients away. Recent graduate Alice is hoping her attempt at spicy pork wontons will show her natural skill. Coriander, pork and lots of lime rind. That lime is overpowering everything else. The wonton it's a little bit wet, yeah. a little bit damp because you boiled them. Yeah. Scientist Susie hopes to impress the judges with smoked trout on horseradish mash and a spinach sauce. The first flavour you get is the strong horseradish. I don't mind it. My issue is the texture. It's getting a bit gloopy. You cook the fish quite well. I'll get glimpses of the cook within. Will firefighter Robin's brave attempt at a smoked trout souffle have paid off? Sweet smoked trout. It's well seasoned. It's light. Robin, I've got to put my hands together. I think that's very, very good indeed. Thank you. It's a perfect souffle. Well done. Do your mates back at the fire station know you cook like this? No, I wouldn't tell them. <laughs> We've got judging to do, you've got waiting to do. Off you go. <sighs> Some good cooking in here today. Robin, good on him, walked in here and made a souffle. And actually, his gamble paid off. It was light, it was well flavoured, it was absolutely perfect. I feel on top of the world, really. I'm really pleased that um, they like my food. Robin stays. Oh. Jeremy, he made a fish cake in a salad. It wasn't a good fish cake and it wasn't a very nice salad. Jeremy can't cope with the pressure of this competition. Jeremy goes home. Simon made potato pancake really good and very confident. 
and it looked nice. That guy cooks. Simon's great. Simon's in. Alice cooked wontons, but the line was just too overpowering. It probably should have sat aside. The real issues were that the wonton itself was just waterlogged. With her inexperience, Alice can't go any further in this competition. So now it's between Susie and Morag. Susie had the right idea. Smoked trout, mashed potato, horseradish, but the sauce was a bit gloopy. But uh, I like the flavour of the mashed potato. I like the flavour of the fish. There's a little bit of optimism, but there's also a little bit of pessimism. I, I really have, I have not got a clue how that went. Morag, there was just too many things going on in the one plate. But the flavours that she wanted to put inside her patties were good. The girl obviously cooks quite a lot. I was on enough to get through. It was quite complicated what I did, but I wished I'd listened when somebody said, don't pile all the ingredients in. <laughs> Who's it going to be? I asked that. <laughs> oh, there. Give us your crystal ball. Interesting day. Diverse cooking. Well done. Robin, you're staying with us. Well done. Jeremy and Alice, sorry guys, you're leaving us. Simon, you're cooking tomorrow. Okay, so, Susie, or Morag? Susie, you're leaving us. Congratulations, Morag, you're staying. God. Oh, I can't believe well that. Done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. I've loosened up a bit. <laughs> I am feeling uh, surprised and uh, amazed. We'll leave the judging's over. <laughs> I'm feeling very relieved after that. It's probably one of the hardest days I've ever had in my whole life. <laughs> I really, really was so wrapped when they said I was through, and I think it really has spurned me on now. I really want to win it now. We have our three, and we have made their day. Tomorrow, their first proper experience of the professional world, but I know how hard it is to make it in that kitchen. Will they do well? It's day two, and the contestants arrive at Stanza, a restaurant serving British cuisine in the heart of London's theatre land. They'll be cooking a busy lunch service under head chef Gavin Horton. It does get quite intense. It's just about really concentrating, really, and not panicking. If you start panicking, then you'll just completely lose control. So follow me through to the kitchen. The contestants are thrown straight into preparing the dishes. And it's not long before the restaurant starts to fill up. First order in, guys. Two scallops, followed by one lamb, one sea trout, yeah? Good, chef. Morag is cooking seared scallops and chorizo with hazelnut dressing and cress. It's a popular starter, so the pressure's on. Two scallops, how long? Ready now, chef. Chef, are they all right? Uh, no, these scallops aren't all right. Part of the pan's got burnt with the butter, and the other parts just not even hot enough. So put them aside, get a fresh two on. Yes, chef. More eggs, uh, um, yeah, they're struggling, I think, actually. Struggling with the scallops. She needs to pick up her game, to be honest with you. Doing it again. I expect I'll spend most of my day doing it again. As a firefighter, Robin's used to extreme pressure, but can he handle the heat of a hectic pro kitchen? I might look confident, it doesn't mean I'm feeling confident. <laughs> He's cooking roast lamb and devilled lamb's kidneys with carrot puree and chives. All right, check out no starlers, yeah? So straight on, three lamb, followed by two lamb. Yes, yeah, chef. What are you waiting for? Uh, good There's question. There's, There's good the question. lamb. There's kidneys. Yeah. Get the sauce in. No. Yes, yeah, chef. Come on, can we go with the lamb? Come on, yeah, come on. Robin's struggling with the pace of the kitchen. Yeah, clean, clean the plate. Yes, yeah, chef. Clean the plate. Service! 
but Simon's in his element. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm looking forward to it really kicking off later on. He's cooking wild sea trout with samphire, girol mushrooms, broad beans and chive sauce. He must cook the delicate fish to perfection. Take the trout out of the pan, no? The trout's ready, I can see it's ready. Hello! Sorry, chef. The sea trout's overcooked. He's burned the fish, but he's not going to give up. I'm absolutely determined to get better and try and be perfect. All right, check out another check. That's another two scallops in order, so that's five scallops in total, yeah? Chef, chef. The orders for Morag scallops continue to flood in. But under pressure, she's losing focus. How many are you doing here? 100. Well, let's start again. Concentrate on, uh, on the job you're I doing. I don't know where I am. All you need is two scallops. Unbelievably stressful. I'm thinking I'm never eating scallops again. Yeah, it's all right, we're getting there. We're getting better now. Yeah, OK. okay. Service! On the other side of the kitchen, Robin is still having a rough ride. It's an experience, really. definitely an experience. Uh, uh, 30 uh, seconds, uh, yeah. Start again. <laughs> Not good enough. OK. Four plates. Yes, Chef. Very disappointed, so I'm doing them again from scratch. Will his presentation meet the mark second time around? Robin, a bit sloppy on the sauce, sir, with the lamb, eh? Yes, Chef. The lunch rush is now at its peak. Samaj, two scallops, followed by one lamb, one sea trout, yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After his earlier mistake with the fish, Simon's determined to cook his trout to perfection. This is it, yeah. This is the one. This is the one I'm going to get perfect. I'm determined. All right, service trout, service trout. Service! Lovely, Chef. Thanks, Chef. Very good. His persistence has paid off. But can Robin and Morag finally get to grips with their dishes? Scallops! Yes, Chef. That's better. Yay! Thanks, Chef. I got it right at the end. Which proves that practice makes perfect. Move it, move it, move it. Robin's last dish goes out. Yeah, better. But he's found it tough in the pro kitchen. Really hard work, harder than I thought. It's just relentless for the whole two hours. And I collapse now. After a gruelling service, how does head chef Gavin think they got on? The service, a little occasional panicking, but generally I think service went uh, reasonably OK. More I felt that she was struggling a wee bit. She got a few returns and she had to do them again. I think that put her in a bit of a struggle. It was an amazing experience. I was kind of like got it right in the end. I think Simon was much more keen to, and, and eager to improve uh, on everything that he was doing, which was quite impressive. Overall, it was brilliant. It was just a general adrenaline rush. I don't think Robin got a full grip of the dish. The presentation of the carrot puree was most of the time a little bit sloppy. So Robin was very much at, at the sort of same level, at a par all the way through the service. As far as dreams go, I certainly know that working in this environment probably isn't for me. Um, as for where I go from here, I'm not sure. If I was to choose one of the three, I would definitely choose Simon. And I think he's got a little bit extra more skill than the other two. Definitely, this is still what I want to do. Absolutely. What you have got to do now is get that last reserve of energy and cook for us the two dishes that you've practised. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. In the invention test, Robin wowed the judges with his savoury souffle, but he didn't enjoy his experience in the pro kitchen. Will his own two courses be enough to secure a quarter-final place? Your first taste of a professional kitchen today. What do you reckon? I wasn't expecting to be quite as it was, actually. Um, quite long and um, relentless. I'm not sure that that is what I want to do, really. I have to be, if I'm being totally honest, I can't see myself in a really hot kitchen for the rest of my life. But I, I really love my cooking and 
That's why I'm here, really. What are you going to cook? Salad of samphire crabs, or a bed of chicory, and then medallions of pork with black pudding, crackling and horseradish mash. Proper man food today after yesterday's souffle. The idea of the pork, the black pudding, the crackling, delicious. But what's going to make it really, really sexy? Ladies and gentlemen, you've had 20 minutes. 20 minutes have gone already. Passionate cook Simon excelled in the invention test and came out on top in the pro kitchen. Will his own dishes of cumin-crusted lamb, potatoes, kale and a red wine jus, followed by a chocolate pudding, make him a quarter-finalist? Simon, first taste of a professional kitchen. Yep. What do you reckon? It was hard, but in some kind of sick way, I still ended up enjoying myself. So do you think that is the start of your dream? It's definitely the continuation of my dream, yeah. I'm committed to having a career in food. I wasn't quite sure what. Now I'm really considering more that it could be as a chef. Good luck. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with lamb and cabbage and potatoes, but cumin and red wine as well. We'll see, we'll see. You are halfway. Half an hour to go, guys. Half an hour. So far, Morag has shown her technical skill, but she struggled to focus in the pro kitchen. She must now prove that her own rustic dishes can make her a winner. Maura, yesterday uh, we cited a lot of ingredients and a lot of flavours which didn't necessarily deliver. What are your dishes today? I'm doing guinea fowl uh, in Madeira with clementines and I'm doing steamed syrup sponge and then some poached rhubarb and uh, a custard. Right. What do you think you have to show to us today to progress? I have to show that it can be cleanly presented, tastes good um, and put a smile on your face. Yesterday we had far too much going on on the plate. I hope she doesn't make the same mistake again today. Only five minutes! Food on plates! Get it on the plates. We won't give you extra time. Time's up. That's it. Finished. Time's up. Firefighter Robin is starting with a spider crab, samphire and chicory salad. His next course is pork with black pudding and caramelised apples, horseradish mash and mustard sauce. It's salty but still sweet from the crab, it's bitter from the endive. It is absolutely delicious. I get lovely, beautiful, sweet crab meat. I would squeeze a lot more lemon on it. Starter to main course. I love the textures of that black pudding against the pork. Um, your sauce for me is a little bit thick and the whole grain mustard has made it acidic. lovely flavours. They just go from the sort of chalky black pudding to the softness of the pork. But that sauce is too sweet. I didn't think I would have got to this position where I am now. I'd love the opportunity to push myself a bit further. Simon's first dish is cumin-crusted lamb, potatoes, kale, pancetta and a red wine reduction. It's followed by a chocolate pudding with cream. Your lamb is cooked beautifully. It's gutsy, the food you really like. It just needs the little bit of extra time to make it really beautiful. It's not far off though, Simon. I think your lamb is cooked beautifully and I like the cumin on the side. Brilliant, brilliant dish. That's finished with the lamb. Bring in the chocolate pudding. Because you ran out of time, you only had time to just quickly sling one on. In fact, I don't think it would have collapsed if you'd have actually placed it a little bit gently, but you didn't have time. 
and your balance of cocoa and your balance of sugar is, is, is right. I mean, it's really soft, it's really light. The pudding's lovely. I mean, it looks like someone sat on it right now. It's a really delicious pudding. It delivers on flavour, it delivers on texture. I don't doubt you can cook, Simon. I think you've had a pretty tough day. I, w I want to go through, I need to go through to show that I can actually do both things, have the flavours and do it in time. Rustic cook Morag has made guinea fowl with Madeira and Clementine sauce and crushed potatoes. Her dessert is steamed syrup sponge with poached rhubarb and custard. Everything on there is cooked beautifully. Your potatoes are soft, your meat is beautifully cooked, but the sauce is so powerful that nothing else is getting through at all. I think your guinea fowl and the sauce is actually very, very delicious, but I don't think the flavours of orange potato work. There's just too much. We've done with the guinea fowl. <laughs> We're bringing in the pudding. It is lovely creamy custard and the sharp sweetness of rhubarb. After that, in comes this really nice moist sponge. Back for these desserts I love, but not together. your pudding is perfectly made and perfectly flavoured. The issue is that you're throwing it all at one plate. Take one away. If you go through this competition, what would it mean to you? The realisation of a dream. Yeah, a dream can control. We're going to ask you to step outside. We're going to try and make a decision. Wow. Um, one from these three. John, I am in a state of confusion. Morag. That guinea fowl, that orange sauce to me, was lovely. Being washed away by those potatoes, no, wrong. Her dessert, beautiful ginger and golden syrup pudding, fantastic custard, delicious rhubarb. They are two desserts. Uh, I think everything Morag cooks, she cooks really well but there are too many things going on a plate. The fact is that Morag, all she's got to do is take a couple of things away. We know she's a good cook. They thought a bit too many things on the plate, but the main thing was that, that they thought I could cook. I like Simon's food, I think Simon can cook. The lamb was cooked absolutely perfectly. The potato and onion cake, lovely idea. John, it's, it's the right food, it's the food we like. The chocolate pudding just falling at the last minute, but the flavours were good. He gets it. He gets good food, but he didn't give himself enough time to plate up properly. I hope to show the judges today that what I'm about are big flavours and food cooked with love. On to Robin. I think the crab salad was absolutely beautiful and it was clean and it was crisp. I think that crab needed a big squeeze of lemon. It just needed lifting. His pork dish, that sauce, too acidic and yet sweet from the whole grain mustard. And unfortunately, it meant it, the dish didn't sing like it should have. But the pork was so moist and so was the black pudding. Nice dish. For me, the issue is that he really didn't enjoy being in a professional kitchen. What do we do now? We've just found a high wire rack to scare the heights. I think after the professional kitchen, I was doubting where I wanted to go. But what I do know is that I'm enjoying the competition and um, I really like the opportunity to continue. All three of these can cook. This, for us, is tough. This has been a really tough decision. Our quarter-finalist... ..is Simon. Absolutely in shock, but I'm so happy. I can't explain it. I'm a little bit disappointed. At the end of the day, Simon was a brilliant cook, but I'm really pleased with my performance overall, so I, I can take that away and be really happy with that. It'll never be the end of cooking. I hope one day I do get to do what I want to do in France and people will come and eat my food and like it. I know I'm good at doing this, and I know it comes from my heart. For me to be able to actually win it, it would mean so much to me. And that's just hitting home that I could actually win it. Woo! <laughs>
Simon's place is secure for now, but in the morning he'll be back for the next daunting stage. It's 8 a.m. on quarter final day. And these four heat winners have returned to battle for a coveted place in the semi finals. On quarter final day, the competition gets tough. Four of the best amateur cooks cooking against each other to find us one semi finalist. Suddenly, you're now I'm here sitting in the quarter finals, and really, the, the final isn't that far away. And I do believe I can win. But I take nothing for granted, and anybody can pull it out of the bag. I just hope it's me. I think if I go through today, I really believe that I can win it, definitely. To be able to win this competition would mean the world to me. It would change my life a lot. Now the skill level has got to go up a notch. Their cooking has got to go up a notch if they really want to make it as a semi-finalist. First up, it's call centre manager Chris, who took a step closer to changing his life when he wowed the judges with two diverse styles of food. Lovely, well-cooked piece of beef. I'd eat the whole lot. Thank you. Like a deadly assassin, the chilli comes just creeping into your palate. I think it's delightful. Thank you. I am truly excited about Chris. He understands the food of the world. And wow, what great food. But. Chris's issue is his own confidence and how good a cook he really is. Have you got any dressing and duck breast? I feel like a different person in terms of my belief in what I can achieve. And why shouldn't it be me that wins? Thank you very much. Great generous. Former scientist Simon's passion for food shone through from the start. His rustic dishes were packed with flavour. Your lamb is cooked beautifully. It's gutsy, the food you really like but he's also struggled with timing issues. It's really soft, it's really light. The pudding's lovely. I mean, it looks like someone's sat on it right now. What is incredible with Simon is he does deliver big, rustic flavours. This is the food that you and I truly, truly love. But Simon has got to be realistic on what is achievable in the time. If he can get that right, that guy can go far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you again. I like to think that my food is a reflection of me. It's hearty, generous, and it's, it's filled with love, and I believe that's good enough to win. In her heat, experimental cook Cassandra showed flashes of brilliance with her unique flavour combinations. I think the flavours are extraordinary. I really like the idea of it. But she hasn't always got it right. I can't remember the soy and polenta ever meeting. And now I've tasted that, I realise why they've never met. Okay. Of all our cooks today, Cassandra has to be the one who's stuck her neck out the most as far as her cooking style. That experimental style doesn't always work. When it does, it absolutely blows you away. And that's what we need from her today. Everybody's got something to prove today. But if I cook well, I really do believe that I can go on and win Master Chef. Spend all day, yeah. Train mechanic Graham struggled to keep his emotions in check when he won over the judges with his classic comfort food. There are some things in life that are just an absolute joy, and this is just superb. Graham. That boy cooks from the heart. It's comfort food. It's full of flavour. But he's a very emotional cook. It gets the better of him. He gets very, very nervous. The guy has to use that emotion to be able to drive him to get his food on his plate. The thing that I think would make me win MasterChef is just being able to put all the passion that I've got onto a plate, just give it my best shot. Who can hold their nerve? Who can harness that skill and that talent and keep their head? That one is the semi-finalist. It's going to be a hot competition. It's 10 o'clock and the contestants are back at MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home. This is ingredients recognition. We want to see how many ingredients they can recognise. That will give us a good indication of how much cooking they really do. I've got five common fowl. I've got pureed soft fruit. 
They have to rely on their sense of smell and their sense of taste. Good cooks should have good taste buds. And this is a good test for the taste buds. First up, I've got blackberry. They are sweet, slightly acidic. You get them all the way through to the water. What's that one? Blackberry, I'll see. I thought it was blueberry, but um, I'm not sure. Blackcurrant. Blackberry? No, I'm, I think it, it tastes like pear, so I'm not sure. Well, it tastes like a pear, OK. Um. Cassandra's off to a bad start. Now it's vital she can convince John and Greg she's committed to a career in food. If I don't get the chance to cook today, I would be really devastated. I really, really want to be able to show them that I can be their master chef. I have three great obsessions in my life. Shoes, handbags and food. By far, food is the biggest obsession that I have. From being a farmer's daughter, I have been involved in food and I'm really, really passionate about ingredients and producers and being able to give people pleasure by what they eat. And that's really important to me. OK. This is the guinea fowl, and we can tell by these brown, almost purple legs and lovely little brown feet. And just simply roasted like a chicken, it's fantastic for Sunday roast. What's that? Guinea fowl. Pheasant. Pheasant. What's that? Big confidence. Come on. Guinea fowl. Chris has shown a good knowledge of ingredients. Now he must persuade the judges that his passion could propel him to MasterChef victory. My drive is an opportunity to change my life. You know, I've got to start believing it can happen because I'll give it every single ounce of effort that I've got. I'm desperate to be given the opportunity to learn even more than I've learned already. My whole life, I've watched other people go to work and it's something that they love doing. I've realised that, you know, it could happen to me as well and I'm just, you know, begging you give me the chance to cook again. Thanks, Chris, very much. Good old English strawberry. Best eaten just on their own. Everybody can recognise a strawberry. What's that one? I think this is strawberry. Good. Strawberry. I think I should know it, but I'm going to taste it again. If you don't, you don't. It's mm. fine. Strawberry? Yeah, it's, it's definitely not strawberry. I just, I've, I've drawn a blank. Graham has failed to identify the strawberry. Now he needs to pull out all the stops to show he's serious about a semi-final place. I'm living the dream now, and it's absolutely... It's mind-blowing. To get the opportunity to cook this afternoon, it would mean the world. It'd be fantastic. From a young age of seven and eight, I've started getting into food. I'm now 45. That passion has just grown and grown and grown. I've got a dream that I want to be able to educate people out there. I want them to share part of this passion. I just want you to give me that opportunity to be able to cook this afternoon. I think I can do that. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Thanks, guys. This little thing here is a quail. As far as the Middle East is concerned, these are used for celebration, but actually are quite new to the Brits. What's that? Um. Um. Quail. Quail. Poussin? Uh, I think that's a quail. Simon has recognised the most ingredients. Now he must show his love of food can match his culinary knowledge. I'm not going to write anything down for the passion test because what I want to say is it is in my heart and I've already committed to a life around food through MasterChef. I'm hoping that I can dream bigger. I've spent a large part of my life searching for happiness. Over the last year or so, I realised that the source of my happiness is food and I really have to make this part of my future. So I need to get through, I need to cook for you to show you my heart on a plate. Thank you very much. OK, thanks.
this is our worst, worst moment because we have to judge actually to take one person out of the competition without them even cooking. And we have so much passion. We have such committed cooks here that I really don't know how we're going to tear them apart. Chris did very well in the ingredients test. I like his passion. He looked like he was going to either burst into song or burst into tears. He just got more and more passionate as time went on. But moreover, his food is actually quite special. I really want to see the guy cook again. So Chris stays in. Yeah, I agree. Simon did the best in the ingredients recognition test and actually what he said was very, very passionate. So passionate, he's already given up his job to work in food. So, are we agreed? Simon stays. And now it's actually between Cassandra and Graham. Graham. Well, he did OK in the ingredients recognition, but the guy didn't even know what strawberries were. There are certain ingredients on those trays that people should know what they are. But the fella is so passionate, he's almost exploding. He's like a volcano of food emotion. I, I find that hard not to be in love with. One person for me I would like to cook again is Cassandra. I see in Cassandra a spark, that there could be something very, very exciting. No, I get what you're saying, but she didn't do very well at all in the ingredients recognition. Yeah, this is hard, John, really hard. We have to make a decision. The decision has been really tough today because you are all talented cooks. The person leaving us is Cassandra. Okay. I'm feeling really gutted, but um, the other three guys were really, really passionate and um, I'm disappointed, but I'm really proud of myself in him. Well done. You have a chance of becoming a semi-finalist. Gentlemen, let's cook. The three remaining contestants have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they've designed themselves. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. Dad of two, Chris, is aiming to showcase a broad repertoire with his three-course menu. Chris, you are obviously extremely busy because the amount of ingredients you've got here. I really wanted to make you something that I love eating. We're starting off with dolmades, which is stuffed vine leaves. Um, I've added peppers and some mince to them, which is the way that I grew up sort of having them. The main course is duck served on crushed peas with a celeriac puree, and then a raspberry and strawberry stack. I'm representing Cyprus, so I've got to pull it off. You're representing Cyprus with a, with a duck, duck and peas. But I think the freshness that runs through the whole menu means I can get away with a change in cultural approach. What do you think it is we're looking for in you? I think you want a bit more confidence from me, which I tell you, I'm definitely getting a lot more. You know, why shouldn't it be me that goes all the way? Chris is starting to have confidence in his own abilities. He's got to prove to us he wasn't just a one-hit wonder. It's gone already. It flies when you're having fun. Passionate cook Simon is adding an Eastern twist to his rustic British dishes. And Simon, your three dishes are? Black pudding and scallops resting on caramelised red onions and a cauliflower bhaji puree. And your main course? is Chinese spiced belly pork with root vegetables. Pudding is a lemon tart. What do you think, Simon, is the most difficult part of your dishes today? Timing, I've got a lot to do early on. I'm just bringing it all together at the end. I know that's my weakness and that's what I've got to really, really try out now. Simon, how much do you really want this competition? I came into it thinking it was going to be great fun, but I've realised that this is what I want to do and I want to win MasterChef. I want to think big and dream big. Simon's flat. 
waivers today. They are huge and extraordinary. He's really got to prove to us that he can hold it together. Gentlemen, you've had 45 minutes. 45 minutes have gone. Train mechanic Graham's cooking classic comfort food. But to clinch the semi-final place, he'll have to prove he can overcome his nerves. Graham, you must be very, very excited to be here. Absolutely exhilarated. I'm in the quarter-final stage of the MasterChef. It's a magical trip so far. What is it you're going to cook for us? I'm doing a fresh herb broth. Chervo, tarragon, parsley. Uh, main course is what? A venison fillet with uh, pepper and lavender crust, fishy carrots and a fan rosti, and strawberries, which is marinated in balsamic and lemon dressing, and a strawberry cream. It's, it's very, very simple. Everything's got to be cooked to perfection. Tell me why you've toned it all down. The last time, I think, I was trying to do too much in the time given, and it, it really sort of got me quite anxious. And today, I had to prove that I needed to calm my nerves. Well, you're talking to us without shaking, which is a good thing. I'm um, shaking in my boots, I tell you, but no, actually, I feel a lot calmer today. And while I'm in the rain, I'll be giving it your best shot. He's trying to calm himself down, going for a simpler approach. I hope he gets his flavours and textures bang on. Fingers crossed. Step away from your benches. Your time is up. Chris is drawing on his Cypriot roots with a starter of dolmades stuffed with pork and olives on a Greek salad. I like the flavours a lot those flavours of Cyprus, says cinnamon. It just feels to me it needs something else. Another five minutes and there would have been a satsugi on that plate and it makes <laughs> all the difference to that dish. It's light and it's refreshing and it's very juicy. It needs to then go on to a creaminess. The tzatziki would have been perfect. Will Chris achieve perfection with his main course? Roast duck breast on minted peas with Madeira sauce and celeriac puree. Lovely flavour of that beautifully cooked piece of duck. Then a huge amount of mint comes in. But then you get this amazing rich sauce. Mate, I love that. It is just bursting full of flavour. That sauce is just beautiful. That is hugely, hugely impressive. Can Chris continue to win praise with his dessert of strawberry, raspberry and vanilla cream stack served with a raspberry coulis? I really like it. I've got to find strawberries. I've got to find raspberries. Lovely buttery puff pastry and great cream inside. The wonderful vanilla cream combined with the gentle juice of that strawberry, that is a joy to behold. I think that's enough. The raspberry coulis is too overpowering. Do you think you can cope with the pressure of this competition? 100% I can cope with the pressure of the competition. I just hope I haven't made too many errors. Simon's managed to plate up in time but will his first course of black pudding with scallops and a spicy cauliflower puree be to the judge's liking? That spicing in there hits you like someone set light to your tongue. I think you may have slightly overdone it. You get all the individual flavours. My issue is the black pudding coming in. I'm sort of like, whoa, it's just a little bit big for me. Okay. 
will Simon get the balance of flavors right with his main course of Chinese spiced pork belly with root vegetables and a cider and apricot sauce? I like the spicing around the outside of the pork and I love it with the sweet, acidic sauce. The use of root vegetables doesn't sit happily. I can get every single flavour, but my mouth is finding it really difficult for it to come together as a single dish. It's very, very confused. Can Simon now wow the judges with his dessert of a puff pastry lemon tart? I think going into a quarterfinal and a semi-final, you've got to be a little bit neater. But the taste is sublime. It's like a lemon's just picked up by the ears and given you a big snog. Really lovely, sharp, but yet sweet lemon custard filling. I just think it needs a little bit more finesse. How much do you love doing this competition, Simon? Winning this now has become more important than anything else, so... Yeah, this is what I want. Graham has made a fresh herb and potato broth as a starter. It is bursting with almost sweet herb flavour. I'm a fan. That works for me. Cheers, thank you. You get the depth of the chicken stock, the subtlety of herbs. For me, I think it just needs a little bit more pepper to give it a bit more spice. Will Graham's main course of peppered venison fillet, potato rosti, vichy carrots and a chocolate jus go down as well as his starter? At the moment, it looks like a baby stegosaurus. But I understand why you've done it, because you want to keep it crispy, you want to keep it out of the sauce. Yeah. The meat is cooked perfectly, the rosti is crispy, but I think your flavour and texture combination is absolutely great. It's got good base flavour. I just don't feel I get the flavour of those carrots. They don't come through. A little bit more work and can become very, very fine indeed. Graham's dessert is strawberries and cream flavoured with mint and balsamic vinegar. The flavours are right. Strawberry, cream, mint, but... A dessert at this level needs to be more than strawberries and cream. Yeah. Strawberries and cream are mint, absolutely delicious. It needs another texture. It needs a biscuit or some sort of crumb. Right. You've been brave today, Graham, because you've come in here, you knew exactly what you wanted to do tactically, and you've done it. I tried it pair back so I just wouldn't be have that nervous tension, but I think I might have just done enough. I think I might have just done enough. I'm hoping so, but time will tell. You're going to have to sit outside while Greg and I find out who will go through to the next round. Thank you very much indeed. Off you go. Quarterfinal days always throw up some extremely good food, and today was no exception. I'd like to start with Simon. Scallop, black pudding, caramelised onion, I'm fine with. Add to that all those spices, it's just far too much. His flavourings on that main course were highly unusual, but I thought he'd got that one slightly wrong. I really like that tart. Nice little lemon filling, lovely idea. But it looked scruffy. I put my heart out there on a plate, but ultimately, I've given it my best shot. As good a cook as he is, I don't think he is in the league of Chris or Graham. So we're saying, right now, Simon goes home. Look, I, I've, I've liked Graham for the minute he walked into the MasterChef kitchen. That herb broth, it was light and it was just as fresh as a... as fresh as a bunch of herbs. For me, Bit more pepper and just take it up one more step. That crispy rosti with that perfectly cooked venison was stunning. And the sauce rich as you like and really holding the whole lot together. 
Strawberries, cream and mint. It's the right combination. It needs finesse. You know, the idea of paring the food down, I think, in my mind, is a great one. But strawberries and cream? Come on. I'm feeling absolutely exhausted, but absolutely thrilled as well. Um, if I get through, I really do think I could produce something to get us through the final. Chris, inspired from his youth, Domares. I love the crunch of the pine nuts, the cinnamon in the background. The flavours for me were great, but it lacked something. It was supposed to have tzatziki on the side. The main course was divine. The deepness of that reduction, that sauce, against the moist duck, I thought was absolutely super. It was absolutely fantastic. For his dessert, a huge amount of work going on there. Coolies, puff pastry, great vanilla cream, but I didn't need raspberry cool. It was far, far too powerful. I, I'm desperate to go through to the next stage. You know, it's been described as a life-changing opportunity, and for me, it, it would absolutely be that. We're looking for the winner of a quarter-final, a semi-final place. This is really seriously tough. What are we going to do? A tough competition, this. We have three great amateur cooks, but we only have one semi-final place. The winner of the quarter-final... ..is Chris. but I'm more convinced than ever that my future lies in food. So for that, I'm really grateful. I'll take this experience away and I'll, I'll cook, I'll be more creative. All I can say is to my friends, watch out. There's more dinner parties to come. There is a guy who understands different cuisines, who understands different techniques, who delivers on flavour absolutely superbly. He's not only technically gifted, he's got an exceptional palate. I think Chris deserves this. I'm in the semi-finals. <laughs> Unless I'm dreaming, which is possible. Oh my god. I love you so much. I love you, gorgeous. Now, I thought that my life was mapped out for the next 20 years and you know, it, it wasn't everything I wanted it to be. And now I've got a chance to change it. And I'm just, you know, I'm just so happy that I'm still in the competition. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Just have a drink. Congratulations. Chris will return for the semi-finals. But next time, we're back with six new contestants all battling it out for the title of MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs>